Hello and welcome to this tutorial video. For this tutorial, we'll be running through the emitter log section. The emitter log follows on from the heat loss calculations, so you'll first of all need to complete the heat loss section on the building calculations area. The first thing to do on the emitter log is select a flow temperature, and this is, can be done by selecting a temperature from the drop-down option here. Um, so for this example, we'll select 50 degrees. Once you've saved that, a list of the rooms that you've inputted on the heat loss section will appear, as so in this section here. When you need to add an emitter to a particular room, click on the pencil icon on the right hand side and it will take you through to that room's details. As you can see, some room details are already pre-populated for you for heat loss, floor area, watts per meter squared and watts per meter band. These are pre-populated based on the information you've put on the heat loss section. As you go down, there's an option to add emitters. Now there's an option here to a drop down to add multiple emitters. So as you can see, we've already input one, so we'll add another. And this will give you an option to select the type of emitter. So you have various radiator types and underfloor heating that you can select. If you go to standard radiator as this example, it'll then give you an option to add a description of a product. So as you can see, our previous example is already in that list. So if you're installing the same radius twice, you'd select that again. If it's a different item, select new inventory item and it'll ask you for some details to, in, to add in. Now the description is predominantly the manufacturer's name, model and dimensions of the radiator that you're installing. You then need to add the rated output at mean water air temperature 50 degrees. And this would be based on the manufacturer's guidance. Uh, a lot of manufacturers advertise their products at a mean water air temperature of 50 degrees, so it should be fairly easy information to get hold of. Um, but you would need to contact your manufacturer for this. Um, as you can see from our previous example, a, the output has been pulled through and then a correction factor has been applied based on the heat emitter guide. Um, also an output flow has been applied to that emitter based on the conditions of the room and the flow temperature selected on the previous section. In this section, you can also select underfloor heating as an emitter. Um, the process for this is slightly different. Um, you're not required to add in the output on this as it's not a requirement for the underfloor heating. So if you add a new inventory item for underfloor, you're just required to add a description. This is basically the manufacturer type of pipe and the pipe spacing that will be applied. The pipe spacing should be based on the heat emitter guide and the guidance given within that document. Um, for underfloor heating, output and correction factors will appear as NA and 0.1. Um, don't be too concerned if this happens on your project. All underfloor heating options will appear as this, as it, they're not applicable for underfloor heating and there is no correction factor that needs to be applied for pipe spacing. So that's basically a quick run through of that section. Um, obviously, if you have multiple emitters, just select them from the drop down. One thing to look out for is the output of flow should meet the heat loss requirement of the room. And as you can see from this example, one radiator wouldn't be sufficient to meet the heat loss of the room. So you would need to add another emitter in, either another radiator or underfloor heating. Once you've completed that section, just press the save button save the information that you've put in and then press the back chevrons to move back to the room log. All the rooms that you've inputted on the heat loss section will appear in this list so you can work through and add the emitters to each of them. Obviously there'll be more rooms on your project. All the emitters that you add to the sections will appear on the emitter log as well and it will give you the, the room name and a description of the emitters for each room. You can Download a PDF version of the information by pressing the print button and that will give you a document output of the results as well. Another area to bring to your attention in relation to the emitter log is in the My Settings area, which is in the tabs that run along the top here. You then need to go to Inventory and this is where all the previous inventory items that you've added to the software will be stored and recorded for you. So it sort of acts like a database of all the emitters that you use on a regular basis. Um, the different tabs along the left hand side for the different types of emitters that you can apply and then you can add a new inventory item to the database without running a new project 
so you can keep them ready for when you do have projects to go. Also, if you delete any inventory items from any of these sections, they'll fall into the archive section and you can reactivate them at any time. So that's basically a quick run through of the emitter log section. If you do still have any questions, please contact your consultant and I'll be happy to run through it in more detail with you. And thanks for listening.